Uh, we are on the 29th section, so we only have two more sections to go, inshallah, uh, tw the 29th juz. Just again, to preface, uh, I'm not a scholar by any means. These are just my own personal reflections on the Quran. Uh, side by side with me, I do have a uh, scholarly work, Tafsir al-Sadi, and he gives us some deeper insights into the Quran. Anytime that we're approaching the Quran, first things first is we make ablution, so it's called wudu. Once that's complete, we set our intention to seek the bounty and the knowledge from the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, and that he can grant us an opening. Following that, what we do is we seek refuge from the accursed shaitan by saying, Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wonderful. So we left off at the beginning of Surah Al-Mulk, and uh, this is one of my favorite surahs in the Quran. So I'm super excited for today because uh, this particular section of the Quran has a lot of some of my favorite revelations. Alrighty, so chapter 67, Surah Al-Mulk. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Blessed is he in whose hand is dominion, and he is over all things competent. He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is best indeed, and he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. So notice right off the bat in this particular revelation, we have the very purpose of our existence, right? And it's a test uh, of who is going to do better indeed or who's going to do best indeed. And uh, this really is the heart of the existence of mankind when it comes to the worship of the uh, creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who created seven heavens in layers, you do not see in the creation of the most merciful any inconsistency. So return your vision to the sky. Do you see any breaks? Then return your vision twice again. Your vision will return to you humbled while it is fatigued. So obviously the more uh, examinations that you are conducting of the worldly form of existence, meaning the sky and all of its constructs, Obviously, your eyes are going to get tired because you're going to be you're going to be kind of seeking things out. So uh, this is a challenge to you to see if there's any breaks or cracks in the very fabric of existence, and it's so smoothly constructed. Um, you know, uh, God only knows the true megapixel of your eye, but I've heard that it's somewhere upwards of like 560 plus megapixels. So just imagine that the clarity that you see in the speed that you see, even when you're moving just your hand in front of your eye. And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with lamps, i.e. stars, and have made from them what is thrown at the devils and have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. And for those who disbelieved in their Lord is the punishment of hell and wretched is the destination. When they are thrown into it, they hear from it a dreadful inhaling while it boils up. So it's giving you the um, characteristics of hellfire, the lively nature of it. It also bursts with rage every time a company is thrown into it. Its keepers ask them, did there not come to you a warner? They will say, yes, a warner had come to us, but we, but we denied and said, Allah has not sent down anything. You are not but in great error. And they will say, if only we had been listening or reasoning, we would not be among the companions of the blaze. And they will admit their sin so to to is alienation for the companions of the blaze. Indeed, those who fear their Lord unseen will have forgiveness and great reward. And conceal your speech or publicize it. Indeed, he is knowing of that within the breasts. Does he who created not know while he is the subtle, the aware? It is he who made the earth tame for you. So walk amongst its slopes and eat of his provision. And to him is the resurrection. Do you feel secure that he who is above would not cause the earth to swallow you and suddenly it would sway? Or do you feel secure that he who is above would not send down against you a storm of stones? Then you would know how severe was my warning. And already had those before them denied, and how terrible was my reproach. Do they not see the birds above them with wings outspread and sometimes folded in? None holds them aloft except the most merciful. Indeed, he is of all things seeing. And now this is pretty profound because it basically is saying 
that um, the wind and the air was subjugated for the birds through their design, right? Through their, their wings and uh, their, the way that their bodies were constructed and so on. Or who is it that could be an army for you to aid you other than the most merciful? The disbelievers are not but in delusion. Or who is it that could provide for you if he withheld his provision? But they have persisted in insolence and aversion. Then is he who walks fallen on his face better, guided, or one who walks erect on a straight path? Say, it is he who has produced you and made for you hearing and vision and hearts, i.e. intellect. Little are you grateful. Say, it is he who has multiplied you throughout the earth, and to him you will be gathered. And they say, when is this promise if you should be truthful? Say the knowledge is only with Allah, and I am only a clear warner. But when they see it reproaching, the faces of those who disbelieved will be distressed, and it will be said, this is that for which you used to call. Say, O Muhammad wasallam, have you considered whether Allah should cause my death and those with me, or have mercy upon us? Who can protect the disbelievers from a painful punishment? Say he is the most merciful. We have believed in him, and upon him we have relied. And you will come to have, uh, you will come to know who it is that is in the clear error. Say, have you considered if your water was to become sunken into the earth? Then who could bring you flowing water? Uh, and this is uh, pretty profound, right? Because this is so necessary for the growth of every type of vegetation. Uh, including livestock as well. So consider that, um, you know, you might have some type of a petty argument in regards to, oh, you know, we can desalinate water now with the oceans and all this other stuff. Yeah, but how are you going to feed the planet? You know, the entire ecosystem is just going to go completely awry. And it just spells doom, right? So um a really just a, a useless argument with that stuff for people that are uh, super big on technology and science and thinking that that's the solution to everything. Uh, wonderful. That concludes Surah Al-Mulk. Next up, we have Surah Al-Qalam, uh, which is the pen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Noon, by the pen and what they inscribe. You are not, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the favor of your Lord, a madman. And indeed, for you is a reward uninterrupted. And indeed, you are of a great moral character. So you will see, and they will see, which of you is the afflicted by a devil. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who has gone astray from his way, and he is most knowing of the rightly guided. Then do not obey the deniers. They wish that you would soften in your position, so they would soften towards you. And do not obey every worthless habitual swearer and scorner going about the malicious gossip a preventer of good, transgressing and sinful, cruel, moreover, and an illegitimate pretender. Because he is a possessor of wealth and children, when our verses are recited to him, he says, legends of the former peoples, and we will brand him upon the snout. Now, I do want to check out the tafsir for some of these in particular. Um, I have a feeling that they're going to be clustered up here by a savvy, but I'm positive that we're going to get some uh, golden nuggets here just because of the nature of the speech. So uh, he clusters one through seven. So let's see what um, what he says here. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the pen, which includes all pens that are used to write different kinds of knowledge and with which pro, uh, prose and poetry are, are written. This is because the pen and what is written with it of all kinds of words is one of the greatest signs of Allah. It deserves that Allah should swear by it to the innocence of his prophet Muhammad وسلم, of what his enemies attributed to him of insanity. Allah states that he is not a madman by the grace and kindness of his Lord, for he had blessed him with perfect reasoning, mature thinking, and concise speech, which was the best, uh, which was the best that pens could record and people could write down. That is true bliss in this world. Then Allah mentions his bliss in the hereafter. He says, verily, you will have a never ending reward. That is a great reward as is indicated by the indefinite form of the word. 
never ending, that is unceasing, rather it will be ongoing and eternal. This is because of what the Prophet did previously of righteous deeds and because of his sublime character. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily you are of an exalted character, that is a sublime character, for you have attained an exalted position by virtue of your exalted character with which Allah has blessed you. His exalted character may be summed up by the way the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, explained it to the one who asked her about it. She said his character was the Quran, and that was recorded by Abu Dawood and authenticated by Al-Albani. This is similar to the verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make allowance for people's nature, enjoin what is right, and turn away from the ignorant. And that's in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 199. It is by the mercy of Allah that you deal gently with them. If you had been harsh or hard-hearted, it would have dispersed from around you. So pardon them and ask for Allah's forgiveness for them and consult them in matters of importance. Then when you have taken a decision, put your trust in Allah, for Allah loves those who put their trust in him. And that's in Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 159. And lastly, there has come to you a messenger from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you suffer, and he is full of concern for you. And towards the believers, he is compassionate and merciful. And that's in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 128. And there are similar verses which indicate that the Prophet ﷺ possessed the noblest of characters and which encourage us to strive to attain an exalted character. He possessed the best and noblest of characteristics in each of which he attained the ultimate degree. He was easygoing and gentle and was close to people. He would accept the invitation of anyone who invited him meet the need of anyone who asked him for help and respond, uh, responded kindly to anyone who asked of him, never turning away, um, never turning anyone away empty handed. If his companions suggested something to him, he would agree with them and go along with them, provided that there were no shari reservations concerning it. If he wanted to decide about a matter, he would not make a decision concerning it without their involvement. Rather, he would consult them and seek their advice. He would show appreciation to those among them who did good and forgive those who caused offense. He never sat and talked to anyone without showing the best behavior and attitude towards him. He would never frown at him or speak harshly to him, and he never stopped being cheerful with him. He would not take him to task for slips of the tongue, and he would overlook anything he showed of roughness. Rather, he would treat him extremely kindly and show great forbearance towards uh, whoever he was speaking to. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed him with all the exalted characteristics in all aspects, and his enemies claimed that he was insane and confused, Allah said, so you will see and they will see which of you is confused. And Allah indeed made it clear that he was the most guided of people and the most perfect of them in and of himself and in his attitude towards others. Whereas his enemies were the most misguided of people and the worst of people in their attitudes towards others. It is they who sought to confuse the slave of Allah and lead them astray from his path. Uh, the slaves of Allah. So not, not the messenger of Allah, but rather his followers. It is enough that Allah knows that about them, for it is he who brings people to account and requits them for their deeds. Verily, your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his path, and he knows best who is rightly guided. This is a threat to those who have gone astray and promise to, and a promise to those who follow true guidance and its highlights. Uh, it highlights the wisdom of Allah as he guides those who are fit to receive guidance to the exclusion of others. Now the next cluster is going to go through verses 68, uh, uh, 68, 8. So again, chapter 68 is what we're on. So we're going to go from verses 8 all the way to 16. And, um, and there were a couple that caught my interest here. So I'm pretty excited for this. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so do not yield to the disbelievers who reject you and stubbornly deny the truth, for they do not deserve to be yielded to, because they only ask that which is in accordance with their whims and desires, and they seek nothing but falsehood. Therefore, the one who yields to them will be giving precedence to that which will harm him. This is general in meaning and applies to every disbeliever and every uh, and every yielding that results from disbelief, although the context refers to a specific case, which is when the polytheists asked the Prophet them to refrain from criticizing their gods and their religion, in return for which they would stop criticizing him. Hence Allah says, they, namely the polytheists, wish that you would compromise, that is, that you would agree to some of what they follow, 
either in word or deed, or by keeping quiet concerning issues that you should make clear, so that they too would compromise. Rather, you should convey the commands of Allah and preach the religion of Islam openly. And part of preaching it openly is denouncing its opposite and criticizing that which is contrary to it. Right? So they had um, two opposing forms of doctrine. You, you can't have both, right? The dogma is just completely different. And do not yield to any contemplating oath monger. That is one who swears a lot of oaths because such a person can only be a liar. And whoever is a liar cannot be contemptible. That is base and vile, lacking in wisdom, with no aspirations for good. Rather, all his aspirations are connected to base physical desires. A backbiter. That is one who criticizes people a great deal and speaks ill of them, gossiping about them, mocking them, and so on who goes about with malicious gossip. That is, he goes about among people spreading malicious gossip, which means transmitting words of one to another for the purpose of causing trouble between them and stirring up enmity and resentment. Uh, withholding good. That is, he withholds the good that he should do, such as obligatory spending, expiatory charity, zakat, and so on, transgressing beyond bounds against people by wronging them and causing them physical harm and transgressing against their wealth and honor, steeping in sin. That is, he commits a great deal of sin that has to do with transgression against the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Harsh, that is cruel, vicious, and hard-hearted, unwilling to accept the truth, and furthermore, ignoble, that is illegitimate of unknown lineage. There is nothing in his essence that could lead to good. Rather, his character is the worst, and he has no hope of achieving success. To sum up, Allah forbids yielding to any vile oathmonger and a liar who has the worst of characteristics, especially characteristics that include self-admiration and arrogance towards the truth and towards people who looks down on people and therefore backbites and spreads malicious gossip, criticizing them, and who commits a great deal of sin. Although these verses were revealed concerning some of the polytheists, such as Al-Walid ibn Mughira, or someone else because Allah says of him, because he has wealth and sons when our revelations are recited to him, he says this is nothing but tales of the ancients. That is because he had an abundance of wealth and sons. He transgressed and was too arrogant to accept the truth, and he rejected it when it came to him, regarding it as mere tales of the ancients, which could be accepted or rejected. They are also general in meaning and apply to anyone who meets this description because the Quran was revealed to guide to a guide all of humanity, which includes the first generation of this ummah and the last of them. Some verses may have been revealed for specific reasons for concerning a specific individual in order to clarify a general principle. And that's very sound. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the one who does what he has described here, stating that he will mark him on the snout as a punishment so that his punishment will be obvious. He will be given a mark in place where he will feel it most, namely his face. And also, you know, because your face is like the first thing that somebody looks at when they talk to you, um, they will be able to uh, recognize that you are indeed branded someone uh, with the mark of a, a liar or, um, you know, a deceiver. Okay, beautiful, uh, wonderful explanation by Savvy. Let's carry on with the reading. All right. Indeed, we have tried them as we tried the companions of the garden when they swore to cut its fruits in the early morning without making its exception. So there came upon it, i.e. the garden, an affliction from your Lord while they were asleep, and it became as though uh, reaped, and they called one another at morning, saying, Go early to your crop if you would cut the fruit. So they set out while lowering their voices, saying, There will surely there will surely not enter it today upon you any poor person. And they went early in determination, assuming themselves able. But when they saw it, they said, indeed, we are lost. Rather, we have been deprived. The most moderate of them said, did I not say to you, why do you not exalt Allah? They said, exalted is our Lord. Indeed, we were wrongdoers. Then they approached one another, blaming each other. They said, oh, woe to us. Indeed, we were transgressors. Perhaps our Lord will substitute for us one better than it. Indeed, we are towards our Lord desirous. Such is the punishment of this world, and the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they only knew. Indeed, for the righteous with their Lord are the gardens of pleasure, 
then will we re then will we treat the Muslims like the criminals? What is the matter with you? How do you judge? Or do you have a scripture in which you learn that indeed for you is whatever you choose? Or do you have oaths binding upon us extended until the day of resurrection that indeed for you is whatever you judge? Ask them which of them for that claim is responsible or do they have partners? And let them bring their partners if they should be truthful. The day the, the shin will be uncovered and they will be invited to uh, prostration, but they, i.e. the disbelievers, will not be able. So a lot of golden nuggets here. Definitely worth visiting the tafsir. Uh, in regards to the story. So he uh, said he clusters all the way from verse 17 to verse 33. And um, this encompasses the story. I want to see if there's some key takeaways because there's no uh, there's no point in me repeating the actual story. But um, it looks like he doesn't have any uh, clustered key takeaways. So obviously the story is self-explanatory. What did catch my interest is that even uh, the most moderate of them was the one that reminded them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So just he had like a, a very level-headed kind of viewpoint. He wasn't this, you know, ultra-connected individual. Uh, let's see if, let's see if he comments on that. So the most just and fair-minded of them said, did I not say to you, why do you not glorify Allah and refrain from withholding charity? That is, why did you not declare Allah to be above all that is not befitting to him? Which includes your thinking that your power is independent. If you had made an allowance for the will of Allah and said, if Allah wills, thus making your will subject to the will of Allah, this would not have happened. All right? So they withheld charity and they were trying to um, basically beat uh beat the harvest by keeping it away from the poor, which is, again, it's not yours anyway, it's a gift. Now, um, carrying on to verses 34 through 41, there's definitely some golden nuggets here. So here's what uh, Sadi has to say. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of what he has prepared for the pious who avoid disbelief and sin of all kinds of delight and uh, delights and life of peace in closeness to the most generous. And he tells us that his wisdom does not di dictate that he should make the Muslims who are devoted to their Lord comply with his commands and seek his pleasures like the evildoers who persist in disobeying him and denying his signs and revelations, opposing his messengers and fighting his close friends. Whoever thinks that Allah will reward them equally is mistaken, his judgment is false, and his thinking is corrupt. If the evildoers think that, they have no evidence and no scripture from which they learn or which they recite to tell them that they will be among the people of paradise and will have whatever they want or choose. They have no covenant with Allah and no solemn promise that is binding upon him until the day of resurrection, that they will have whatever they choose, and they have no partners or supporters who will help them get whatever they want. If they do have partners and supporters, then let them bring them if they are telling the truth. It is well known that they have none of these things. They have no scripture. They have no promise for the law of salvation, and they have no partners to help him, help them. Thus, it is known that their claim is utterly false. Uh, and uh, so very true, right? If you're, if you're not following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you really don't have any type of um, recompense other than what's due to uh, falsehood. Right, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from uh, being upon falsehood and disbelief. Wonderful, carrying on. Their eyes humbled, humiliation will cover them, and they used to be invited to uh, prostration while they were sound. Uh, now, note um, this is uh, pretty wild in regards to the day of judgment. So, uh, it says here the believers who used to prostrate to Allah willingly and by choice will prostrate, and the evildoers and the hypocrites will try to prostrate but they will not be able to do so for their backs will be as solid and inflexible as the horns of cattle unable to bend. This is a requital that will match their deeds for in this world, they were called to prostrate to Allah, affirm his oneness and worship him when they were whole and sound with no physical defects, but they were too arrogant and refused to do that. So do not ask about their situation and bad fate on that day for Allah will be angry with them and the punishment will have become inevitable for them. They will be utterly helpless and no regret or excuses will benefit them on the day of resurrection. So 
you know, so kind of lot of imagine a situation where now you're seeing everything and you're like, okay, I definitely like, I need to prostrate. This is obviously real, but you won't be able to, you know, uh, may Allah protect this. So leave me, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the matter of whoever denies this statement, i.e. the Quran. We will progressively lead them to punishment from where they do not know. Again, this is one of the scary things. Like, you won't know that you're being led astray. You're just going to think that you're kind of lobby dying through life and everything's going hunky-dory, right? I will give them time. Indeed, my plan is firm. Or do you ask of them a payment so they are by debt burdened down? Or have they knowledge of the unseen, so they write it down? Then be patient for the decision of your Lord, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and be not like the companion of the fish, who is Jonah. He called out while he was distressed. If not that favor, i.e. the mercy from his, Lord over to, uh, from his Lord overtook him, he would have been thrown out onto the naked shore while he was censured. And his Lord chose him and made him of the righteous, and indeed those who disbelieve, would almost make you slip with their eyes, i.e. looks, when they hear the message, and they say, indeed, he is mad, but it is not except a reminder to the worlds. So remember, the Prophet was sent to all of the worlds, both seen and unseen, right? Uh, Surah al um the inevitable reality. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The inevitable reality. What is the inevitable reality? And what can make you know what is the inevitable reality? Thamud and Ad denied the striking calamity, i.e. the resurrection. So, so as for Thamud, they were destroyed by the overpowering blast. And as for Ad, they were destroyed by a screaming violent wind, which he, i.e. Allah, imposed upon them for seven nights and eight days in succession, so you would see the people therein fallen as if they were hollow trunks of palm trees. Then do you see of them any remains? And there came, uh, and there came Pharaoh and those before him and the overturned cities with sin. And they disobeyed the messenger of their Lord. So he seized them with a seizure exceeding in severity. Indeed, when the water overflowed, we carried you, i.e. your ancestors, in a sailing ship that we might make it for you a reminder and that a conscious ear would be conscious of it. Meaning <laughs> somebody has to hear this, whether it be through a story or whether it be through the Quran. Uh, naturally, in this instance, it could be applied to both because I'm sure that there was a, a transmission of the story of Musa. Uh, excuse me, of the story of Noah. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, when the horn is blown with one blast, and the earth and the mountains are lifted and leveled with one blow, i.e. stroke, then on that day the occurrence, i.e. resurrection, will occur, and the heaven will be split open, for that day it is infirm. And the angels are at its edge, and there will be there will bear the they will bear, excuse me, and there will bear the throne of your Lord above them. That day eight of them. That day you will be exhibited for judgment. Not hidden among you is anything concealed. So as for he who is given his record in his right hand, he will say, here, read my record. Indeed, I was certain that I would be meeting my account. So he will be in a pleasant life, in an, in an elevated garden, its fruits to be picked hanging near. They will be told, eat and drink in satisfaction for what you put forth in the, past, in, in the days past. But as for he who is given his record in his left hand, he will say, oh, I wish I had not been given my record and had not known what is my account. I wish it, i.e. my death, had been the decisive one, meaning he's going to wish that there was no afterlife at all. Uh, rather, it was just the, the death and the final uh, kind of plane of existence being this worldly life. My wealth has not availed me. Gone from me is my authority. Allah will say, seize him and shackle him, then into the hellfire drive him, then into a chain whose length is 70 cubits insert him. <coughs> Indeed, he did not use to believe in Allah the most great, nor did he encourage the feeding of the poor. So there is not for him here this day any devoted friend. So again, it's displaying those characteristics. The lack of disbelief is paired with um, not taking care of people that are poor or poverty stricken, 
stuff like that, nor any food except from the discharge of wounds. And that's, that's pretty putrid, you know, um, nothing, nothing pleasant about that. None will eat it except the sinners. So I swear by what you see and what you do not see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anytime that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us an oath, it's something to pay attention to, right? So he's swearing both by what we see and what we not, what we don't see, uh, both seen and unseen. <laughs> that indeed it, i.e. the Quran, is the world, word of a noble messenger. And it is not the word of a poet, little do you believe, nor the word of a soothsayer, little do you remember. It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. And if he, i.e. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had made up about us some false saying, we would have seized him by his right hand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying right here, if, if um, Muhammad alayhi wa sallam was declaring to be some type of a prophet, but he was not a prophet, so you have people that argue his false prophecy, uh, he would have seized him by his right hand. This type of seizure is an immediate type of seizure, right? Meaning that um, he would not have been able to fulfill any type of message. He would not have been alive at all, uh, especially when it's talking about, um, you know, your, your right hand is talking about your uh, uh, major arteries there. Uh, then we would have cut from him the aorta. So now he mentions in specific um, the aorta, right? And there is no one of you who could prevent us from him. So interestingly that the, the aorta is mentioned because his existence would cease in, you know, what, less than a minute, maybe, maybe less than 30 seconds because of the nature of the aorta. And indeed it, i.e. the Quran, is a reminder for the righteous. And indeed, we know that among you are deniers, and indeed, it will be a cause of regret upon the disbelievers. And indeed, it is the truth of certainty. So exalt the name of your Lord, the Most Great. Uh, wonderful. Uh, a supplicant, uh, uh, this is, uh, excuse me, this is Surah al Um And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A supplicant asks for a punishment bound to happen to the disbelievers if there is no preventer. It is from Allah, owner of the way of ascent. The angels and the spirit, i.e. Gabriel or Jibreel, will ascend to him during a day that the extent of which is 50,000 years. So be patient with gracious patience. Indeed, they say they see it as distant, but we see it as near. On the day, the sky will be like murky oil and the mountains will be like wool. And no friend will ask, uh, no friend will ask anything of a friend. So very gravity stricken, right? A very, very weighty day. And uh, notice the duration of time here where Los Panta says uh, one day and this particular day, right? Which is the day of judgment, the day of account will extend uh, a which is 50,000 years, meaning there, there's a lot of creation, guys. And these things are, it's going to take some some serious time, right? And now if you're in a position of disbelief, uh, that right there is a punishment of itself because um, not only are you basically uh, biting your nails and sweating and crying to the point where like tears of blood are going to be coming out of your eyes, um, but you know that even after this 50,000 term uh, is eternity, right? So you've got nothing to look forward to. But in regards to people that are on the right, right, that receive their book in their right, um, they're going to be, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, reclined on soft couches and having a good old time, right? Uh, they will be shown each other the criminal will wish that he could be ransomed from the punishment of that day by his children. And his wife and his brother and his nearest kindred who shelter him. So notice that the criminal right now, uh, he has protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's protected right now, but um, on that day, there's, there's nobody. And whoever is on earth entirely so, then it could save him. No, indeed, it is the flame of hell, a remover of exteriors. It invites he who turned his back on truth and went away from obedience. And notice the terminology here says that hellfire invites you, right? So if you're perpetually on disbelief, you're accepting that invitation and collect wealth uh, and collected wealth and hoarded. Indeed, mankind was created anxious when evil touches him, impatient, and when good touches him, withholding of it, meaning, uh, you know, you turn a little miserly and stingy. Accept the observers of prayer. 
those who are constant in their prayer and those within whose wealth is a known right for the petitioner and the deprived and those who believe in the day of recompense and those who are fearful of the punishment of their Lord. Indeed, the punishment of their Lord is not that from which one is safe and those who guard their private parts except from their wives or their those their right hands possess for indeed they are not to be blamed but whoever seeks beyond that then they are the transgressors and those who are to their trusts and promises attentive and those who are in their testimonies upright and those who uh, who carefully maintain their prayers they will be in gardens honored and this prayer is mentioned twice here so uh, pretty important in regards to it being a central conduit for how you're conducting your action. And I think one of the grand reasons for that is if you are constantly having a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you're going to kind of reflect on what have you prepared for that meeting. Meaning uh, if you're constantly being reminded and you're praying five times a day and you're reciting the Quran and you're being reminded of giving charity and helping the needy and taking care of your family and taking care of your neighbor and all this other stuff, then naturally you're going to be more inclined to do that. But if people abandon their prayer uh, and they abandon their, the thing that connects them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most, you know, it will lead to disbelief guys. It's just as simple as that. Okay. Um, so those folks will be in gardens honored. So what is the matter with those who disbelieve hastening from before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? To sit on your right and your left in separate groups, does every person among them aspire to enter a garden of pleasure? No, indeed, we have created them from that which they know. So I swear by the Lord of all risings and settings that indeed we are able so that indeed we are able to replace them with better than them and we are not to be outdone. <coughs> now, subhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath basically by himself, uh, of himself, right? And we are not uh, to be outdone. So leave them to converse vainly and amuse themselves until they meet their day, which they are promised. The day they will emerge from the graves rapidly as if they were towards an erected idol hastening. Their eyes humbled, humiliation will cover them, that is the day which they had been promised. Uh, yeah, all I got to say to that is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the righteous. Uh, next up, we have Surah Nuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Indeed, we sent Noah to his people, saying, warn your people before there comes to them a painful punishment. <coughs> he said, O oh, my people, indeed, I am to you a clear warner to worship Allah, fear him, and obey me. He, i.e. Allah, will forgive you of your sins and delay you for a specified term. Indeed, the time set by Allah when it comes will not be delayed if you only knew. He said, my Lord, indeed, I invited my people to truth night and day, but my invitation increased them not except in flight, i.e. aversion. And indeed, every time I invited them that you may forgive them, they put their fingers in their ears and covered themselves with their garments, persisted and were arrogant with great arrogance. Then I invited them publicly. Then I announced to them and also confided to them secretly and said, ask forgiveness of your Lord. Indeed, he is ever a perpetual forgiver. Now notice, uh, Noah Hamisam is, is showcasing all the methods that he um, conducted Dawa, right? When you're inviting people to Islam, you're, you know, that's what Dawah is. It's an invitation to Islam. And he's saying, I did it both publicly and I did it privately. So he not only looked at people uh, from like a general standpoint, but he also addressed them in a unique sense. Now, imagine being in a situation where obviously you're receiving one on one Dawah with uh, a prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then imagine, you know, being so arrogant to the point that you're rejecting it, you know. Like, what kind of a bonehead were you, man? Um, he will send rain from the sky upon you in continuing showers and give you increase in wealth and children and provide for you gardens and provide for you rivers. What is the matter with you that you do not attribute to Allah due grandeur while well, he has created you in stages? Do you not consider how Allah has created seven heavens in layers 
and made the moon therein a reflected light and made the sun a burning lamp? Now, again, these are both attestations, um, which I would consider miraculous in regards to the seven layers. Uh, uh, the thing that comes to my mind is um, the um, <coughs> seven atmospheric layers, right? Uh, but Allah on it. And then also uh, in regards to the moon, it claims that the light is reflective, which is true. And the sun is a burning lamp. So it's actually producing light, right? And Allah has caused you to grow from the earth, a progressive growth, right? It's not like you just all of a sudden go from being one to 30, right? Then he will return you into, uh, into it and extract you, and extract you another extraction. And the law has made for you the earth and expanse that you may follow therein roads of passage. Noah said, my Lord, indeed, they have disobeyed me and followed him whose wealth and children will not increase him except in loss. And they conspire and, and conspired in an immense conspiracy. And said, never leave your gods and never leave Wad and Sua or uh, Yaguth and Yuak, uh, Yauk and Nasr. And these were all uh, false deities and, and idols, by the way. And already they have misled many. And my Lord, do not increase the wrongdoers except in error. So here you have a prophet making dua against you if you're a disbeliever, right? Um, which is a, any prophetic dua is incredibly powerful. Because of their sins, they were drowned and put into the fire, and they have found not for themselves besides Allah any helper. And Noah said, My Lord, do not leave upon the earth from among the disbelievers an inhabitant. Indeed, if you leave them, they will mislead your servants and not beget except every wicked one and confirmed disbeliever. My Lord, forgive me and my parents and whoever enters my house a believer and the believing men and the believing women, and do not increase the wrongdoers except in destruction. Now, uh, it's to my understanding, I'm going to check the tafsir here to see if there's any insight into this, but it's to my understanding that uh, Noah's dua was indeed answered. But uh, we do believe in a localized flood. It's just that um, the existence of mankind at that time was very small. So... Let me, um, it was concentrated in one particular area. So let me see if I can, if I can get some additional insights into this. So here's what Asadi has to say. Noah said, my Lord, do not leave on the earth a single living soul from among the disbelievers to walk upon the face of the earth. And he mentioned the reason for that, as he said, for if you leave them, they will mislead your slaves and will beget none but wicked disbelievers. That is, the remaining is purely detrimental to them and others. Noah only said that because after mixing with them a great deal and because of what he experienced of their manners and attitude, he had reached at the conclusion based on what he knew of their misdeeds, no wonder Allah responded to his prayer and drowned them all. But he saved Noah and the believers who were with him. So yeah, um, this is lending credence to my personal reflection. And again, I encourage you to conduct additional research. Um, my Lord, forgive me and my parents and whoever enters my house as a, a believer. These people are singled out for mention because their rights are emphasized and they have priority when it comes to showing kindness they, then he made his supplication more general and said, and the believing men and the believing women, and do not increase the wrongdoers in anything but ruin, that is loss, destruction, and doom. Beautiful. So that concludes Surah Nur. And next up we have Surah Jinn. And uh, this is in regards to, uh, obviously, the creation of jinn kind. So here we go. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Say, O Muhammad وسلم, it has been revealed to me that a group of the jinn listened and said, Indeed, we have heard an amazing Quran, i.e. recitation. <clears throat> it guides to the right course, and we have believed in it, and we will never associate with our Lord anyone. And it teaches that exalted is the noblest of our Lord. He has not taken a wife or a son, and that our foolish ones, i.e. Iblis, uh, and, and that our foolish one, i.e. Iblis, has been saying about Allah an excessive transgression. And we had thought that mankind and the jinn would never speak about Allah a lie. And there were men from mankind who sought refuge in men from the jinn, so they only increased them in burden, i.e. sin. And they had 
uh, thought as you thought that Allah would never send anyone as a messenger. And we have sought to reach the heavens, but found it filled with powerful guards and burning flames. And we used to sit therein in position for hearing, but whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in wait for him. And we do not know, therefore, whether evil is intended for us on the earth or whether their Lord intends for them a right course. And among us are the righteous and among us are others not so. We were of divided ways. And we have become certain that we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth, nor can we escape him by flight. And when we heard the guidance, i.e. the Quran, we believed in it, and whoever believes in his Lord will not fear deprivation or burden. Now again, definitely worth visiting the tafsir here, uh, because we're getting a glimpse into the unseen world, uh, especially the unseen world of, a, of another creation called jinn. <coughs> So let's see if um, if we can get a little bit of insight. So this is, uh, again, from Asadi verses uh, 4 and 5. He, exalted by the majesty of his Lord, that is, exalted be his greatness and sanctified by his name, has neither wife nor child. They learned about the majesty and greatness of Allah, which highlighted to them the falseness of those who claim that he has a wife or a child. Because to him belong the greatness and perfection in every sublime attribute, having a wife or a child is contrary to that because it is opposite to the idea of complete independence and self-sufficiency. The fool among us, Iblis, which is Shaitan, has been uttering extravagant lies about Allah. That is saying things that are far removed from what is true, thus transgressing the limit. Nothing made him do that except his foolishness and lack of reason. Otherwise, if he had been mature in thinking and had any shred of dignity, he would have known what is appropriate to say. Although we thought that no human or jinn would ever tell lies about Allah, that is, we were deceived before that by the leaders of the jinn and humans, so we thought well of them, and we thought that they would not dare to tell lies against Allah, therefore we followed their path before this. But today the truth has become clear to us, so we have turned back to him, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and submitted to him. And we do not care what anyone else uh, says that is contrary to true guidance. So even the jinn kind were upon falsehood and they were looking for a guide, right? And again, this is an attestation to the mercy of the Prophet, of him being a mercy to all the worlds. Some individuals amongst humankind used to seek refuge with some individuals amongst jinn, and they only increased them in tyranny. That is, those humans used to worship the jinn and seek refuge with them at times of fear and panic. So the humans increased the jinn in tyranny, that is, transgression and arrogance. When they saw the humans worshiping them and seeking refuge with them, it may be that the pronoun in the phrase, they only increase them in tyranny, refers to the jinn, and the word translated above as tyranny may, re may mean fear. In other words, the jinn increased the humans in panic and fear, trying to scare them more, uh, when they saw them seeking refuge in them, so that they would turn to them and seek refuge with them. When a human halted in a scary valley, he would say, I seek refuge with the master of this valley from the foolish amongst its inhabitants. They thought as you, as you did that Allah would never send anyone as a messenger. That is, when they denied the resurrection, they fell into polytheism and transgression. We saw news of heaven, that is, we came to it and checked it, and we found it filled with formidable guards who prevented us from reaching it, and flame uh, and flaming fire that was thrown at anyone who tried to eavesdrop. That is not how it used to be for us. We used to be able to get news of the heavens. We used to take up positions therein to eavesdrop and get whatever news of heaven Allah willed. But now whoever eavesdrops will find a flaming fire waiting for him, that is, prepared for him to destroy him and burn him. In other words, this is a matter of great significance and is a new development. They were certain that Allah subhanahu wa was going to bring about some major events on earth, either good or bad. Hence, they said, we do not know whether ill is intended for, it for those on earth or their Lord intends good for them. That is, it must be either or or. For they had seen that things had changed for them in a way that they found strange. But with their intelligence, they realized that this was because of something that Allah willed and would bring about on earth. These words are indicative of their etiquette because they attribute good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when referring to ill, something bad, they spoke in the passive, omitting reference to the doer out of respect towards Allah. 
Among us were those who were righteous and some who were otherwise. That is, evildoers, wicked people, and disbelievers. We followed different paths. That is, various sects and groups within different whims and desires, each rejoicing in what they had. We have realized that we can never escape Allah's punishment on earth, nor can we escape him by fleeing. That is now the perfect nature of Allah's might has become clear to us, and we see how completely helpless we are, for our forelocks are in the hands of Allah, and we can never outwit him on earth. We can never escape him if we flee and strive to find means of escape beyond his power. There is no refuge from him except with him. So even these jinn kind that were being worshipped, recognize that they themselves are indeed a creation and um you know they're upon uh they're upon uh, the mercy of a lost path out uh, let's carry on to the next page because i have uh, a little uh, overstepped a little bit in the tafsir um, and among us are muslims in submission to allah and among us are the unjust and whoever has become muslim those have sought out the right course but as for the unjust they will be for hell firewood and Allah revealed that if they had remained straight on the way, we would have given them abundant rain, i.e. provision. So we might test them therein. And whoever turns away from the remembrance of his Lord, he will put into arduous punishment. And he revealed that the masjids are for Allah. So do not invoke with Allah anyone. And that when the servant, i.e. the Prophet, uh, of Allah stood up supplicating, him, they also, uh, they almost became about him a compacted mass. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I only invoke my Lord and do not associate with him anyone. Say, indeed, I do not possess for you the power of harm or right direction. Say, indeed, there will never protect me from Allah anyone if I should disobey, nor will I find in other than him a refuge. But I have for you only notification from Allah and his messages. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger, then indeed for him is the fire of hell. They will abide therein forever. The disbelievers continue until when they see that which they are promised, then they will know who is the weaker in helper, uh, who is weaker in helpers and less in number. Say, I do not know if what you are promised is near or if my Lord will grant for it a long period. He is knower of the unseen and he does not disclose his knowledge of the unseen to anyone except whom he approves of messengers. And indeed, he sends before him, i.e. each messenger and behind him observers that he, i.e. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may know that they have conveyed the message of their Lord and he has encompassed whatever is with them and has enumerated all things in number. So, <clears throat> subhanAllah, uh, just a couple things to reflect on, right? Uh, first and foremost, in regards to um, the notification of the messages and in regards to the numbers of disbelievers, right? So when these people are, th these disbelievers think that there's, they are many, right? And upon the earth, they are indeed many. There's a lot of people that disbelieve. But I think what this is referencing to is uh, just like Allah subhanahu wa says on the day of judgment, when, when they see the true number of believers, including all the angels and all the other forms of creation, they're going to realize just how few uh, in number they are, right? Um, so you can imagine how the, the script is going to be flipped. Uh, and then in regards to conveying the messages, right, we have the the um, test beginning, right? Like it's a brand new examination now. It's not like a, uh, oh, I never heard this before. It's, oh, okay, you did hear it. Now what are you doing with it? And the angels are recording, right? So um, there is a, a couple, ta uh, there's a, a takeaways from the surah, and I think it would be beneficial to cover them. So we learn many things from the surah, including the following, that the jinn exist and they are accountable subject to divine command and prohibitions and will be requited for their deeds, as is clearly stated in the surah, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a messenger to the jinn as he was a messenger to humankind. Therefore, Allah sent a group of jinn to listen to what was being revealed to him and to convey it to their people. The jinn are intelligent and able to learn about the truth. What made them believe was that they understood of guidance of the Qur'an because of their good manners in discussing the issues of the Qur'an amongst themselves. Allah cared for his messenger, and preserved what the messenger brought. 
When the signs of his impending prophethood began to appear, that was when the heavens began to be guarded by shooting stars, and the devils fled from it, and were sent away from their listening posts. For Allah showed an inestimable mercy towards the earth and its inhabitants, and their Lord wanted to guide them. So he wants his religion and law to prevail, and wanted the people of the earth to know him, so that their hearts might be filled with joy. People of understanding might rejoice at that, the rituals of Islam might begin to prevail, and the worshippers of idols might begin to be suppressed. The jinn were very keen to listen to the Messenger والسلام, and they crowded around him. This surah contains the command to, infer, to affirm Allah's oneness and the prohibition uh, on ascribing partners to him. It explains the condition of creation and that none of the creation deserves even an atom's weight of worship, because if it is the case that the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, had no power to bring benefits or cause harm, even for himself, then it is known that all of creation is also like that. Therefore, it is wrong to take such a creature as uh, a god alongside Allah. Allah alone has knowledge of the unseen, so no one among the creation has any knowledge of it except one with whom Allah is pleased and whom he has singled out for something of that knowledge. Um, and that's just a beautiful key takeaway and comment commentary. Okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, chapter seven, 73, which is Surah Al-Muzammin. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay. O you who wraps himself in clothing, arise to pray the night except for a little, half of it, or subtract from it a little, or add to it, and recite the Quran with measured recitation. Indeed, we will cast upon you a heavy word. Indeed, the hours of the night are more effective for uh, concurrence of heart and tongue and more suitable for words. Indeed, for you by day is prolonged occupation. And remember the name of your Lord and devote yourself to him with complete devotion. He is the Lord of the East and the West. There is no, de excuse me, there is no deity except him. So take him as disposer of your affairs. And be patient over what they say, and avoid them with gracious avoidance. And leave me with the matters of the deniers, of those of ease and life, and allow them respite a little. Indeed, with us for them are shackles and burning fire, and the food that chokes and a painful punishment. On the day the earth and the mountains will convulse, and the mountains will become a heap of sand pouring down. Indeed, we have sent to you a messenger as a witness um, upon you, just as we sent to Pharaoh a messenger. But Pharaoh disobeyed the messenger, so he seized him with a ruinous seizure. Then how can you fear if you disbelieve a day uh, that will make the children white-haired? Then, uh, excuse me, the heavens will break apart therefrom, Ever is his promise fulfilled. Indeed, this is a reminder, so whoever wills may take to his Lord away. Now, uh, a very powerful statement in regards to making children gray-headed, right? Um, the gravity of that day and the stress on that day is going to be so much so, especially for the disbelieving people. Indeed, your Lord knows, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you stand in prayer almost two thirds of the night, or half of it, or a third of it, and so do a group of those with you. And Allah determines the extent of the night and the day. He uh, He has known that you Muslims will not be able to do it, and has turned to you in forgiveness. So recite what is easy for you of the Quran has known that there will be among you those who are ill and others traveling throughout the land seeking something of the bounty of Allah and others fighting for the cause of Allah. So recite what is easy from it and establish prayer and give zakat and loan Allah a goodly loan. And whatever good you put forward for yourselves, you will find it with Allah. It is better and greater in reward and seek forgiveness of Allah. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. And again, uh, what a beautiful verse, right? Just It's just perpetual ease upon ease. Uh, I want to see if there is um, a key takeaway, especially on that last verse, to see if there's something that um, we can extract. And I believe there is. Okay. So here is what Asadi has to say. 
At the beginning of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated that he commanded his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to spend half of the night in prayer or one third of it or two thirds of it. And in principle, his ummah is to follow his example with regards to rulings. And in this verse, Allah, so this is verse 20, the, the, the last verse. In this verse, Allah tells us that he and the group of believers with him were doing that because figuring out uh, the time that they were enjoined to pray may be difficult for people. Allah stated that he wanted to make things easier for them. Hence, he said, Allah alone keeps a precise count of the night and day. That is, he knows the measure thereof and how much time has passed and how much is left. He knows what you are able to keep an accurate count of it. Excuse me. He knows that you are not able to keep an accurate count of it. That is, you cannot know the precise measure of it without overestimating or underestimating because that requires paying attention and takes too much effort. So he has made the matter easier for you and has commanded you to do <clears throat> that which is attainable, whether it is more or less than what is estimated. Recite then as much of the Quran as is easy for you in the night prayers. That is, if you uh, of what you know and what is not difficult for you. That is because the one who prays at night is enjoined to pray so long as he has energy. Then if he feels tired or lazy or becomes drowsy, let him rest so that he can offer prayer with ease and in comfort. Then Allah mentions some of the reasons that dictated uh, reducing the burden and making things easier. As he says, he knows that there are some among you that are ill, so it is difficult for them to pray for two thirds of the night or for half of it or one third. So let the one who is sick pray what he can. He is also not required to pray standing if it is too difficult for him. Rather, if it is too difficult for him to offer this prerogatory prayer, he may omit it and he will have the reward of what he used to do when he was healthy and others who are traveling throughout the land seeking of Allah's bounty. That is, Allah knows that among you are some who are traveling for the purpose of trade so that they may be independent of means and refrain from asking of people. It is appropriate that such people should not be overburdened. Therefore, Allah has reduced the obligatory prayer for them by permitting them to put two prayers together at the time of one prayer and to shorten the four rakah prayers. Similarly, they are, there are also others who are fighting in Allah's cause. So recite as much of the Quran as is easy for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two ways of making things easy for the one who is healthy and is not traveling where attention is paid to his energy level without burdening him with the issue of working out the exact length of time. Rather, he may work out the time when praying is best, which is the third of the night and follows the first half. And things are made easier for the one who is sick or traveling, whether his travel is for the purpose of trade or worship, such as fighting, jihad, hajj, umrah, and the like. Attention is also paid to not overburdening people in these situations. To Allah be praised, for he has not made any hardship in religion. Rather, he has made his religion easy and has paid attention to the circumstances of his slaves and that which is there is in their best spiritual, physical, and worldly interest. Then Allah enjoins two acts of worship, which are the essence and foundation of all acts of worship, establishing prayer without which religion cannot be sound and paying zakat, which is the proof of faith by means of which help is given to the poor and the needy. Hence Allah says, establish prayer with all its essential parts, fulfilling its necessary condition and doing the complementary parts too, and giving zakat and lend to Allah a goodly loan. That is one that is given certainty, or excuse me, that is one that is given uh, sincerely for the sake of Allah with a sincere intention and strong faith from permissible sources. This includes both obligatory and recommended kinds of charity. Then Allah urges us to do good in general terms, as he says, whatever good you set forth for your souls, will, you will find with a lot better and a greater reward. A good deed brings a tenfold reward up to 700 fold, up to many times more. It should be noted that an atom's weight of good in this world is many times better than this world and all that it contains because of what it will lead to in paradise of pleasure and delights. Goodness and righteousness in this world will be the cause of goodness and immense reward in the hereafter, for that is the seed, basis, and foundation of goodness in the hereafter. How regrettable is time spent in heedlessness, and how regrettable is time spent without doing any righteous deeds. How regrettable it is to see hearts that are not affected by the exhortation of their creator, and for whom all the encouragement of the one who is merciful to them, then they are themselves uh, uh, to no avail. So yeah, subhanAllah, once again, um, completely rigged in our favor. And then there's just an easing and easing and easing on top of all of that. 
Wonderful. That concludes Surat al muzammil uh, Next up, we have Surat uh, al muddathir Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. O you who covers himself with a garment, arise and warn, and your Lord glorify, and your clothing purify, and uncleanliness avoid, and do not confer favor to acquire more. But for your Lord, be patient, and when the trumpet is blown, that day will be a difficult day. For the disbelievers, not easy. Leave me with the one I created alone, and to whom I granted extensive wealth and children present with him, and spread everything before him, easing his life. And he desires that I should add more. No, indeed, he has been towards our verses obstinate. I will cover him with arduous torment. Indeed, he thought uh, and deliberated. So he may be destroyed for how he deliberated. Then may he be destroyed for how he deliberated. Then he considered again. Then he frowned and scowled. Then he turned back and was arrogant and said, this is not but magic imitated from others. This is not but the word of a human being. I will drive him into a sakab. And what can make you know what is sakab? It lets nothing remain and leaves nothing unburned. Altering, i.e. blackening the skins. Over it are 19 angels, and we have not made the keepers of the fire except angels. And we have not made their number except as a trial for those who disbelieve that those who were given scripture will be convinced and those who have believed will increase in faith and those who were given the scripture <clears throat> and the believers will not doubt that those in, uh, in whose hearts is disease, i.e. hypocrisy, and the disbelievers will say, what does Allah intend by this as an example? Thus does Allah send astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills. And none knows the soldiers of your Lord except him. And it, i.e., mention of the fire, is not but a reminder to humanity. No, by the moon, and by the night when it departs, and by the morning when it uh, brightens, indeed, i.e., the fire is of the greatest afflictions, as a warning to humanity, to whoever wills among you to proceed, or stay behind, every soul for what it has earned will be retained, except the companion of the right, who will be in gardens questioning each other, about the criminals and asking them, what put you into Sakab? They will say, we were not of those who prayed, nor did we used to feed the poor. And we used to enter into vain discourse with those who engaged in it. And we used to deny the day of recompense until there came to us the certainty of death. Now notice the opposite that's being used, right? The opposites of um, the people that are upon belief and they're giving charity and the people that are upon disbelief and they're not giving the charity and feeding the poor and doing all the righteous characteristics. So uh, a lot of um, a lot of golden nuggets here. There is uh, a couple of verses that did catch my interest, mainly from 27 over to 34. So let me see <clears throat> how Asadi clustered these. And um, there, he does provide, I believe, a, a definition here in regards to sakha. So let me see if I can find that for us briefly. Um, so let me jump down to that first. Okay, so he clustered from 12 all the way down to 31. So uh, that certainly does encompass the things that I was interested in. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so uh, this is where uh, he's talking about the individual that is uh, going to perish, right? So may he perish how he deliberated. Again, may he perish how he deliberated because he deliberated about something that was beyond him and tried to do something that he and his ilk will never be able to do. Um, so this is talk, talking about uh, uh, a particular individual, and this is Al-Walid ibn al buriya who stubbornly rejected the truth and openly fought and opposed Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, therefore, Allah condemned him 
and he condemned no one else. And this is the requital of everyone who stubbornly rejects and opposes the truth. He will be disgraced in this world and the punishment of the hereafter is more shameful. So now remember, this is this one particular individual, but just like Asadi had says that we can extract general principles from this stuff. So may he perish how he deliberated again, may he perish how he deliberated because he deliberated about something that he was that was beyond him. Then he looked around, not saying a word, then he frowned and scowled. What appeared to be the case is that this was out of resentment and hatred towards the truth. And he turned away insolently, insolently. And as a result of his intellectual, physical, and verbal efforts, he said, There is this is nothing but magic hand handed down. This is nothing but the words of a human being. That is, this is not the words of a law. Rather, it is the words of human beings and it is not the words of uh, good human beings. Rather, it is the words of evildoers and bad people, namely liars and magicians. May he perish how far away he was from the truth and how deserving he is of doom and perdition. How could anyone think or imagine that the most sublime and greatest of words, the words of the Almighty Lord, the majestic and the most generous could resemble the words of poor and imperfect humans? How could this stubborn liar dare to describe in such terms the words of a law who originates and recreates? He deserves nothing but severe punishment and divine vengeance. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I, would, uh, I will admit him to hell. How could you know what hell is? It leaves nothing and spares no one. That is because of its intensity. It does not leave anything of the one who is punished, but it will reach it. Um, Appointed over it are 19 angels as its keepers. They are harsh and stern, never disobeying a law in what he commands them, and they do what they are commanded to do. We have appointed none but angels as keepers of the fire because they are so strong and powerful, and we have only mentioned their number as a trial for those who disbelieve. What is meant is we have, we have told you the numbers so that we may make known who is sincere and who is lying. This is indicated by the words that follow this statement so that those who were given the book might attain certainty and those who believe might increase in faith. For the people of the book, if the number mentioned matches and is exactly the same as the number that they have, this will increase the uncertainty of the truth. For the believers, every time Allah sent down a verse and they believed in it, that increased them in faith. Um, so, so that those who were given the book and the believers might have no doubts, that is to dispel doubts from them. These are important objectives to which people of mature understanding pay attention and care about striving to increase their certainty and faith at all times with regards to issues of religion and to ward off doubt and illusion that can undermine the truth in a person's mind. Whatever Allah revealed to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made it uh, lead to all of these sublime benefits and made it a means of distinguishing the liars from those who are sincere. Hence, he says, so that those in whose heart is a disease, namely doubt and confusion and hypocrisy, and the disbelievers might say, what does Allah mean by this number? This is reflective of confusion, doubt, and disbelief in the revelation of Allah on their part. This is how Allah guides those whom he guides and leaves astray those whom he leaves to stray. Hence, he says, thus Allah leaves to stray whomever he wills and guides whomever he wills, Whomever Allah guides, he makes uh, what he revealed to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a mercy in his case, increasing him in faith and religious commitment. So um, it seems that there was a link of the number 19 from the previous scriptures, and this was supposed to be a confirmation, right? So because of that confirmation, uh, and again, the Quran is the criterion, it was supposed to increase the people of knowledge and the people of faith to uh, greater heights. And likewise, um, it's a uh, it's uh, a, a test for the people that are uh, insincere, right? So remember, they're liars, they're they're hypocrites, they're concealers of truth, and so on and so on and so on. So um, those are the the segments that I was personally interested in. Uh, let me see if there's any other grand key takeaways, um, not from what I'm seeing from just kind of scanning it, but. Um, Let's see. Ah, oh, there is one. So here's one. Uh, let's see how I can link this to. So uh, this is towards the later verses, right? Um, I believe this is uh, okay. Indeed. So we still have a little bit ways to go. Let me see what he clustered out here. So he clustered all the way to fifty six. So yeah, he clustered all the way to the end. Let me finish the chapter and then um, inshallah, 
I'll provide a little bit of uh, detail. So there will not benefit them the intercession of any intercessors. Then what is the matter with them that they are from the reminder turning away uh, as if they uh, were alarmed donkeys fleeing from a lion? Rather, every person among them desires that he would be given scriptures spread about. No, but they do not fear the hereafter. No, indeed, it, it i.e. the Quran, is a reminder. Then whoever wills will remember it. And they will not remember except that Allah wills. He is worthy of fear and adequate for granting forgiveness. Um, I think this is a little bit self-explanatory, but it's still worth checking out. So the thing that I'm most interested in is verses 50 to 56. So uh, here's what Asadi has to say. He says... Having explained the fate of those who differ and warn of what will happen to them, Allah now rebukes and blames those who are still alive, as he says. Then what is the matter with them that they turn away from the reminder of the Quran in rejection and heedlessness, as if their strong aversion towards it, they started wild, uh, they were startled wild donkeys. That is, if they were wild donkeys who got startled and alarmed one another, so they began to run e even faster fleeing from a lion. <clears throat> the, world tr the word translated here as lion may refer to a hunter who is shooting arrows at them or to a lion or other predator. This is a deception of the strongest kind of aversion towards the truth, yet even with this turning away in aversion, they make big demands. For indeed, each of them want to be given an unfurled scripture or an unfurled scroll to be sent down to him from heaven, and he claims that he will not follow the truth unless he receives that. But they were lying, for even if every sign came to them, they would not believe until they saw the painful punishment. Clear signs had already come to them. That highlighted and explained the truth. If there had been anything good in them, they would have believed. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, By no means will we not give them what they demand, for their only aim is to outwit the Prophet. Rather, they do not fear the hereafter, for if they did fear it, they would not have done what they did. Nay, verily, this is a reminder. The pronoun refers either to this surah or to what it contains of this admonition. <coughs> so let him who will pay heed because the way he has, uh, excuse me, because the way has been shown to him clearly and evidence has been presented to him. But they will not pay heed unless Allah wills. For his will is always done and is all encompassing. No event, great or small, goes beyond his will. This is a refutation of the Qadaris. Who do not believe that people's deeds are subject to the will of Allah and of the Jebedis, who claim that man has no free will or any deed of his own in true sense. Rather, he is compelled to do what he does. But here Allah subhanahu wa affirms that people do have free will in a true sense and in reality, but he states that their will is subordinate to his will. And again, obviously, um, that makes complete sense to me. Right? Your will has to be within the, the realm of possibility, right? It's not like you can just say, oh, I'm unwilling to grow wings. Yeah, okay, great. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't will that for you. So therefore, you're not going to be able to grow wings. If you want to fly, you can, you know, put on like a flight suit or a jet pack or something like that. That is within what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, right? Perfect. All right, moving on to the next chapter, Surah Al-Qiyamah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I swear by the day of resurrection, and I swear by the reproaching soul to the certainty of resurrection, does man not think that we will not assemble his bones? Yes, we are able even to, pro to proportion his fingertips. Now notice here fingertips is used. So this is a unique qualifier of mankind. We all have unique fingertips. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is not only am I going to be able to assemble your bones, which is easy, but I'm going to be able to assemble your fingertips, which is also easy for me, but it's a, it's a unique identifier, and that right there is another miracle within the Qur'an, right? But man desires to continue in sin. He asks, when is the day of resurrection? So when vision is dazzled and the moon darkens and the sun and the moon are joined, man will say on that day, where is the place of escape? No, there is no refuge. To your Lord that day is the place of per uh, a permanence. <clears throat> man will be informed that day of what he sent ahead and kept back. Rather, man against himself will be a witness. Even if he presents his excuses, move not your tongue with it, O Muhammad to hasten with it, i.e. recitation of the Qur'an. 
Indeed, upon us is its collection in your heart and to make possible its recitation. So when we have recited it through uh, Gabriel, then follow its recitation. Then upon us is its clarification to you. Now here you have another rebuke of the Prophet Nisabsana. So probably in his excitement um, and his commitment, he wanted to recite faster than the angel Jibreel. But again, uh, you know, you see that this is a further attestation that indeed um, he does make mistakes in the sense of a human being, right? So he's not some angelic figure or something like that. But uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees him that the protection is with Allah in regards to the preservation of the Quran. So don't worry about the, the hastiness. It's not the best way to go. No, but you, i.e. mankind, love the immediate and leave, i.e. neglect the hereafter. And, you know, think about the um, <clears throat> think about the McDonald's society that we kind of live in right now. You know, you want it now, you want it fast and, and so on and so forth. So it still reigns true till today. Uh, very difficult to find a, a great deal of patience. Um, looking at their Lord, uh, excuse me, uh, and leave, i.e. neglect the hereafter. Some faces that day will be radiant looking at their Lord and some faces that day will be contorted expecting that there will be done uh, expecting that there will be done to them something backbreaking no when it i.e the soul has reached the collarbones and it is said who will cure him and he i.e the dying one is certain that it is the time of separation and the leg is wound about the leg or excuse me and the leg is wound about the leg right so the two legs are crossing over <clears throat> to your to your lord that day will be the precision and he, i.e. the disbeliever, had not believed, nor had he prayed, but instead he denied and turned away. And then he went to his people, swaggering in pride, woe to you and woe, then to, uh, woe to you and woe, then woe to you and woe. So two times over, you're getting a, a, a woeing. Uh, does man think that he will be left neglected? Had he not been a sperm from a semen emitted? Then he was a clean clot, and Allah created his form and proportioned him, and made of him two mates, the male and the female. Is not uh, that creator able to give life to the dead? I Meaning he gave life to you the first time. Why will he not be able to give life to you a second time? And then the, the other thing that's a, a reflection for me is, uh, dude, you're being reminded that you're just a, a, a basically a, a seminal fluid at one point. Like, stop thinking that you're this grand thing, you know, um, humble yourself a little bit and recognize that you uh, you were basically uh, what came from, uh, you know, the loins of your father. Meaning, like, it doesn't matter if you were a king or not, you're, you were still seminal fluid at one point, right? So sit down and think about that for a bit, you know? Okay, wonderful. Uh, Surah Al-Insan, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Has there not come upon man a period of time when he was not a thing even mentioned? Indeed, we created man from a sperm drop mixture, and we may try him, and we uh, uh, that we may try him, and we made him hearing and seeing. Indeed, we guided him to the way, be he grateful or be he ungrateful. Indeed, we have prepared for the disbelievers chains and shackles and a blaze. Indeed, the righteous will drink from a cup of wine whose mixture is of uh, kafur now <coughs> interesting here another reference to the sperm drop mixture right as it ended with one here and it was talking about creation and now it's, it's starting off again with creation and here so that we may try him but here is the the most profound thing we guided him to the way be he grateful or be he ungrateful so whether or not you were thankful or not uh you know a lost path that guided you and the thing with it is that um, you should be filled with gratitude uh, and filled with proper thanks um, to the one that created you in the first place so you could experience life. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't have a choice and this is not. No, man, it's an amazing thing to be able to experience life, friendships, uh, taste food, all sorts of stuff, right? A spring of which the righteous servants of Allah will drink, they will make it gush forth in force and abundance. They are those who fulfill their vows and fear a day whose evil will be widespread. And they give food in spite of love for it to the needy, the orphans, and the captive. So once again, you have those characteristics of people that are upon righteousness, right? They're giving away from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. 
saying we feed you only for the face, i.e. approval of Allah. We wish not from you reward or gratitude. So whether they're doing it in silence or whether they're doing it in public, right? They're not seeking anything else. Rather, they're thinking um, my my creator has a, a reward greater for me than that you could provide me anyway. Indeed, we fear from our Lord a day austere and distressful, obviously day of judgment. So Allah will protect them from the evil of that day and give them radiance and happiness and will reward them for what uh, they patiently endured with a garden in paradise and silk garments. They will be reclining therein, <coughs> excuse me, they will be reclining therein on adorned couches. They will not see therein any burning sun or freezing cold. And near above them are its shades and its fruits to be picked will be lowered in compliance. And there will be circulated among them vessels of silver and cups having been created clear as glass. Clear glass, clear glasses made from silver of which they have determined the measure. And they will be given to drink a cup of wine whose mixture is of ginger from a fountain within it, i.e. paradise, named Sassabir. There, were, uh, there will circulate among them young boys made eternal. When you see them, you would think them as beautiful as scattered pearls. And when you look at uh, their, when you look there in paradise, you will see pleasure and great dominion. Upon them, i.e. the inhabitants, will be green garments of fine silk and brocade. And they will be adorned with bracelets of silver and their Lord will be giving them a purifying drink. And it will be said, indeed, this is for you a reward, and your effort has been appreciated. Indeed, it is we who have sent down to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Qur'an progressively. Remember, it was in stages, right? <coughs> so be patient for the decision of your Lord, and do not obey from among them a sinner or ungrateful disbeliever. And mention the name of your Lord in prayer, morning and evening. And during the night, prostrate to him and exalt, i.e. praise him a long part of the night. Indeed, these disbelievers love the immediate and leave behind them a grave day. We have created them and strengthened their forms. And when, uh, when we will, we can change their will. Uh, we can change their likeness with complete alteration. Indeed, this is a reminder. So he who wills may take to his Lord away. And you do not will except that Allah wills. Indeed, Allah is ever knowing and wise. He admits whom he wills into his mercy, but the wrongdoers, he has prepared for them a painful punishment. <coughs> so once again, we have another uh, ending of, uh, you know, if it's not within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, it's not going to happen. Beautiful. That concludes um, Surah Al-Insan. Next up, we have Surah Al-Mursalat. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. By those winds sent forth in gusts, and the winds that blow violently, and by the winds that spread clouds, and those angels who bring criterion, and those angels who deliver a message as justification or warning, indeed what you are promised is to occur. So when the stars are obliterated, and the heaven is opened, and when the mountains are blown away, and the messenger's time has come, for what day was it postponed? <coughs> For the day of judgment. And what can make you know what is the day of judgment? Woe that day to the deniers. Did we not destroy the former peoples? Then we will follow them with the later ones. Thus do we deal with the criminals. Woe that day to the deniers. Did we not create you from a liquid disdained, and we placed it in a firm lodging, i.e. the womb, for a known extent, and we determined it, and excellent are we to determine. Woe that day to the deniers, have we not made the earth a container of the living and the dead, and we place therein loft, uh, lofty, firmly set mountains, and have given you to drink sweet water. Woe that day to the deniers. They will be told, proceed to that which you used to deny, proceed to a shadow of smoke having three columns, but having no cool shade uh, and availing not against the flame. <clears throat> Indeed, it throws sparks as huge as a fortress, as if they were yellowish black camels. 
Woe that day to the deniers. This is a day they will not speak, nor will it be permitted for them to make any excuse. Woe that day to the deniers. This is the day of judgment. We will have assembled you and the former peoples. So if you have a plan, then plan against me. So here our lost papa is challenging you. So if you have a plan, then plan against me. Woe that day to the deniers. Indeed, the righteous will be among shades and springs and fruits from whatever they desire. Being told, eat and drink in satisfaction for what you used to do. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. Woe that day to the deniers. O oh, disbelievers, eat and enjoy yourselves a little. Indeed, you are criminals. Woe that day to the deniers. And when it is said to them, bow in prayer, they do not bow. Woe that day to the deniers. Then in what statement after it, i.e. the Quran, will they believe? Ah, subhanAllah. Um, once again, very heavy, uh, heavy revelation. And... You know, this is, again, I really encourage you guys to listen to the Quran in Arabic because even though that the message is heavy and it's like a serious and stern warning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his eloquence in um, um, with the recitation proper in the Quran, it's a lot less rigid. And by a lot less, I mean like 100% better in Arabic, alhamdulillah, because the Quran is in Arabic. But uh, this does conclude the 29th juz. I want to finish the reading with Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabihi Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidum Majid. Allahumma barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabihi Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidum Majid.